This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash rogue and get 15% off. Yeah, plus they're good earbuds. We should mention their earbuds. They're earbuds. We should probably tell you that. That's they important. Do, they do sound. All my years have I suffered from all of the indignities. Well, I never, I can't believe for all the world. Lord Morley Crew, I insist you explain immediately. I received this important missive from Physical Feelgood mm. stating that tonight was the grand ball and here I find us alone in a rehearsal studio. Calm thine self, Baron Bon Giovi. Lest I draw my blade and lay you down in a bed of roses. I will have you know on a pod of steel horse I ride. What am I to do with this evening? We have important negotiations, and here I stand prepared to learn Renaissance dancery. And you showing up with this party city frippery. <laughs> you bought it, you old Baron Bongiovi. You give royalty a bad name. Well, what to do with this evening then? Mm, we should surround ourselves with girls, girls, girls. If only we knew how to dance Renaissance style. So here we are at the Austin Historical Weapons Guild with Anna Beard. You're gonna teach us Renaissance dancing today. Renaissance dancing, yes. Yeah, so okay, I, I, I don't know, I don't know anything about this, do you? <laughs> I don't know, I don't. What is that? Renaissance dancing is something that was absolutely important if you were gonna be at court. If you wanted to be seen, it was an opportunity to get close to your prince, your sovereign. It was an opportunity to demonstrate that you were healthy. You're bouncing around, you're showing off your well-turned calf, literally. There are actual things that they say in the manuals that we have that were written in the 1600s that say it was an opportunity to evaluate a potential lover because in regular social intercourse, I'm not allowed to touch you or get close to you. But if we dance, it literally says you can smell and see if they have BO, if they have gingivitis, and it's a delicate way to be like, oh yeah, no thank you. So, <laughs> now is this something that was relegated just to the aristocracy, or could the hoi polloi ever learn? This was across the board, everybody would dance. So in a society where you don't have a lot of uh, PDA, a lot of uh, close touching, this is an opportunity to get close. It was very flirtatious, and it has different meanings at different levels. If you're gonna try and get into Elizabeth I court, being able to dance is really, really important. And there's actually a quote in there that talks about a specific guy who came to her court through his galliard because she was so impressed and it was so important to her. But then you have people in marketplaces and countrysides just dancing. And you can see the importance of it across the board because in the 1600s, they are printing books on how to dance, but then books upon books of dance music. And they're printing these in the thousands because everybody wanted it. This is post Gutenberg. This is when we actually have printing press and all that. And this is a time when social media was nothing but gossip and sidelong glances. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to present yourself well, physically yeah. fit, somebody who was able to seduce and, and, and be a, a, a attractive and nice to be around. So a lot of people had a lot of writing on these events. They, this could change their life. And so they had to get everything perfect. There are a few major manuals that we use. An Italian one written by a Caroso. There's a French one written by uh, Arbo. And these are the main ones that we use. And they have very differing ideas. So courts would employ a dance master because that would bring prestige to your court if you had a very good dance master who's instructing. Not only is he instructing people how to dance, but he's creating ballets for your court too. So it's a, it's a point of pride because you have someone who can instruct but also bring spectacle. This would be the equivalent of somebody hiring a social media coordinator to make sure that they're speaking the right TikToks and the Instagrams and all of that stuff. You speak good TikTok, Mr. Brushwood. Make the TikToks. More TikToks, please. <laughs> okay, of all of the Renaissance dances, what would be the simplest one for us to start with? Knee transfer. Knee transfer, absolutely. <laughs> I would love to imagine we're time traveling and all of a sudden they're like, good God, what is happening? <laughs> the biggest faux pas is when you had Cheetos upon your white tights. <laughs> <laughs> and you got cheese knees. So the pavan is a processional dance. It's an older dance, but it was uh, carried on because of tradition and it was a chance to be seen, to be who are you dancing with, who has asked you to dance, what are you wearing, you know, what is your place in court, where are you in the line? And so this was something that kind of started out the evening and then was done on a ceremonial basis later once people started getting really jazzed about jumping around and showing off their calves and stuff. <laughs> Before we get to the calves, <laughs> I'm imagining the band starts up and a bunch of people are all like a, you know, a high school sock hop out on the sides <laughs> and somebody goes and approaches somebody. What was it called again? The Panade? 
Pavan. Pavan. The p a, a panache? Pavan. 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 Pravda. So you would approach somebody, and, and is it really just, it's a line? You start at the beginning and end at the end? Yep, so you would basically move forward, you would move back. This dance, along with any other, as you've seen, we may have gone from this in the sprinkler to other things we have now. So dances evolved at that time, too. I've so, seen that video. Yeah. <laughs> Pavan to the nene. It started with just walking initially, and then by the time you are in the court of Elizabeth I, it gets pretty, it gets sassy, and you do a, a, a little lift, and now you're really like showing off. All right, dude, I'm ready. I'm ready to okay. prep, 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 uh, 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 Gatorade. Pavan. <laughs> like, sorry, yeah. real close. The more she says it, the farther Brian yeah. gets from it. P A V A N. Sometimes you have an E on the end. Let's make this our dance hall and we're gonna move this way. You're gonna stand with your feet somewhat turned out and your heels together, but it's not overly structured. These are the beginnings of ballet and you later see very pointed feet and whatnot. But in this, most feet are flexed and relaxed. It's more about your upper body. Okay. So your upper body is very tall. Your arms hang by their sides and they talk about having a little bit of air between your arms. So you can think about maybe having like a little tiny kumquat in your armpit. Man, <laughs> I'm you don't always thinking be, about a little tiny you? kumquat yeah. in my armpit. It's yeah. the old kumquat in the armpit <laughs> trick. So you, you don't want to be too too. For the squished. record, my kids have never been impressed by that trick. I fall for it every time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a little bit of space. And there's a lot that they talk about. Actually, this is a, a dance that would absolutely be done with a sword, perhaps, for a gentleman. And so you want a little bit of space, and your hand might even be resting upon your sword as you would do this. A gentleman would extend his right hand. The lady is on his left. And this is a, a hand-holding dance. So there's a little bit of touching, which is always exciting in the Renaissance dance, right? Do it open. hand up or yeah. down or? You or, could do, it's just the picture show, just or, holding or hands. frightened teenager yeah. or? Nope, it's a very light and it's generally just kind of a relaxed hand-holding. It, it doesn't have this like sort of stiff out here. So we're going to start with our left foot and we step together, other side, step together. And now it gets really fancy, we take three steps. And we're not going out, we're, we're going just forward, just, just with a little bit duck-footed. You are going slightly to the side. You are going slightly, and in the later versions, it's much more to the side. I notice you leading with your toe. Toe to heel. This is where my ballet becomes bad, and it's hard to forget oh, okay. when I do Renaissance. It's where it becomes bad. It literally badly. says, badly. it literally says in the, the treaties that you lift with a flat foot and you step on a flat foot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you see me going toe ball heel, it's probably because I can't shut off my muscle memory. I got, got it. <laughs> are we leading with our chest or, or what, what are we projecting? As you're walking through this hall, what you might want to have like running through your head, <laughs> like literally. I am better than everybody in here. My clothes are the best. Look who's on my arm. You guys are wallflowers. Isn't that cool, right? Like you, this is your opportunity. You're making an entrance. You're strutting. You are absolutely strutting. The, a lot of times they will equate this to being a peacock, mm -hmm. right? This is the beginning of the night, possibly. This is the social order. This sets up your evening. So standing tall, a little bit of space in your armpits, and we're walking up together step together and then we go step 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 together that's literally the whole dance nailed it. <laughs> God, I nailed it. we're so yeah. good at this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. See, i almost got you <laughs> this was usually done in a hall so once you got to the end you just beep 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 backed up and did got the it, same thing it, oh really yeah <laughs> You just back up and do it again? You back up the steps. So once you get here, if you're like, oh, I ran out of room, then you would go step together. You just keep, it's like a slot dance. You just keep going back and forth along your hall. Let's go ahead and try that again. Right. You're being very tall. You might have a, um, they actually do talk about swagger. They use the word swagger. There's a little bit of hip. You know, you're not so much as like John Wayne, but mm -hmm. you, as you walk, you can, they talk about like taking that hip forward. So there's a little bit of turning in the body and lifting the chin and you naturally get this sort of more dignified rotation of your body. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so let's try that again. So starting with our left foot and we step together, step together. And then the three steps, one, two, three, together. That's it, that's the whole swagger. thing. I, I was too focused on the swagger, <laughs> not the precision. Too. I don't see, see any this is the difficulty. No yeah, this is the go. difficulty of court dance, right? You have to be thinking about all these things. Not only are you having to keep a hold on that physicality, what am I doing with my body? But then there's also the political going on, right? Like who's watching me? Who's over there? Who's, you know, I want to know what's going on. And so it becomes a very layered, complicated and, experience. And, and, all right, what's next? 
Well then, let's get on with it, shall we? Lord Motley Crew, you know I hold you in the highest regards, but we must resolve this trade dispute. Hmm, might I suggest a dance-off, sir? Right here and now? What better time? Once you do your first dance of the night, you set up social order, whatever, everyone gets a good view of the room, everyone knows what everyone is wearing. There is a dance called the Galliard, and this is like the flashy dance. Mm. This is the dance where you are demonstrating like, look how you know I have stamina, look at my dexterity, look at my beautiful legs, look at my flashy moves. Wait a minute, so if I'm thinking of it right, the, uh, the pr 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 promenade? Pav pavan. The, the, pavan. That one, the pavan is basically, look at how I present. Yes. But I know what you're asking, do I have what it takes in my DNA yeah. to make good, healthy babies for you? Yeah. Step exactly. back, this is the break dancing. We're in the break yes. dancing. It's a mating ritual. Yeah, they will say in the books though, they try to steer people away from that where they're like, well, you don't dance just for pleasure. You dance for purpose. You dance to demonstrate your ability. You dance to gain political advantage, but don't dance because it's fun. You dance <laughs> to demonstrate your ability to provide pleasure. You could interpret it that way. <laughs> Sorry, this is called the on guard? This is called the galliard. Galliard. The galliard. The, the one that melts in your hand at body temperature? That's close. That's close, real okay. close. Gallium. That's where the flute flautists go to learn. It's really hard to get into that school. And actors. Galliard? Yeah, yeah galliard. Right. Right. So this is a dance. There's a lot of jumping. This is um, more often than not a call and response dance with what, your partner. Did you say jumping? Jumping. Like leaving the ground We're with your cardio. feet. We're doing cardio. We're doing cardio. Yeah. This is a oh, cardio dance. Yeah, this is two minutes okay. of just jumping. <laughs> so jumping. You got to yeah. show off your jumping. Yeah, you are literally demonstrating showing off your legs, your calves. Uh, unless you were a lady, you did not want to have your de your dress flouncing up. They actually talk about making sure that that doesn't happen uh, unless you are a strapping hussy in a servant hall, then it's okay. I'm but anyone sure. else, no. So in this dance, you would be dancing with a partner. You're going to be doing intricate uh, movements around each other. There's times where they will dance, where you will dance. And this dance is an improvisation dance. There are so many different songs you could use and then you have a vocabulary and as long as you understand the counting phrase, you can kind of throw in what you want. And they would actually have people like kind of dance battle go back and forth. Would you call out verbally what you're headed towards or it would be just this, this lead follow thing where you would <laughs> indicate from your posture like, well, I'm pretty sure he's going for this and I'll follow. I kind of like the call out thing. Yeah. But <laughs> Cincinnati shuffle. <laughs> But, but, but that's that's what square dancing is, isn't that's it? Right. Yeah, yeah, quite literally yeah. you call it all out. That's well, this point. starts to go on, and like once you get into like English country dancing and contra dancing, you have more of that, like the actual call out. So dance masters are going to be publishing their own arrangements, basically, and so you could learn those. And so you would start to understand like these are the accepted structures in Galliard. So it's not exactly a free for all, but there is definitely room for people to put in flourishes where there were flourishes, or even to maybe be crazy and invent their own steps that then everyone else wants to learn. When they were publishing these, did they do like the literal dance steps like I think of from the 1950s? No, so a lot of what we have now in the books, um, there's a thing called Laban notation, which is like dots and lines and swirls and things, and so we have those from later, but when you look at these treatises, they're done as conversations between master and student. Hmm. And so they lay them out like, master, what is this galliard I keep hearing about? And he goes, well, I'm glad you asked. And then we'll describe it. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow and you have to dig in and there's an assumption that you have an understanding of certain things that they just throw out. And then right. as we trying to study now, you have to go, what? And cross-reference and go back. And you're taking hints from how they notate the music and how they talk about the steps to try and put all the pieces together. So, okay, what are some, what are some of the Juilliard moves? You are going to start with a hop and lifting your left. So we go here and then you switch, and then you switch, and then you step, and you brush and come together. Okay. That is the basic. What are my hands foot doing? Your right? arms are always down, kind of in that kumquat armpit space. Got it, yeah. kumquat pose. Almost as if to delineate like, hey ladies, ain't nothing happening up here. It's Get all, your eyes down where the action's it's at. It's all from the waist down. In Renaissance dance, you're either holding hands or your arms are not quite so tight as say Irish dancing, but it's relaxed, but they aren't doing a lot. Okay. Want to portray this is easy. 
right? And so like, as you're jumping and doing things, you're like, look, my arms are so fine, I don't even have to do so, anything. So, so you're like, I mean, I'm not even trying. Like, you know, you're yeah. busy like like casting your eyes around, like whatever. Is this the starting point for most of the dances? Like, So a lot of the dances, you're kind of in, they call it an oblique. You're a little bit out, so it's not quite as crazy as like a first position you would see in modern ballet, but you're not in a super pedestrian relaxed. So okay. it's in this kind of connected. Heels oh, touching. Oh, yeah, a little bit. So with our left leg coming up first, you go out, 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 step, rush, jump. So you have kind of this alternating, hopping from foot to foot action, mm -hmm. and then you have a step, you brush, as you jump, both feet come down together. Out, out, step, brush, jump. Now this is the hard part. We were talking about this before we yeah. started shooting. I did a reality dance competition show and I found it extremely difficult once we got beyond four or five moves to remember everything. So I had to come up with like code phrases to tell myself like, remember out, out, step, I've already forgotten. It's, <laughs> this is, does not come up easy. I'm using mostly the French version so we could sit here and use all the French words, but really if you just think of this little chunk as kind of the Galliard basic, okay. you'll be able to, if I say we're doing the basic on the left and then the right, it'll maybe start to kind of like okay, sink in. So if we're going out, 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 step, there's that brush jump together. Yeah, so those feet are jumping together. So you're thinking about in terms of how are, how's my weight shifting, and this one is a one-to-one. -one. I'm hopping one-to-one, -one, right? And on this one, I'm brushing, I'm hopping one, but I'm landing two. Yeah, perfect. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, brush. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. That was really good. <laughs> this is like these are things that people would study and train for a long time to get to the point where maybe uh, Queen Elizabeth is saying, "Do a galliard with me," or "I want to see you do a galliard." Like you are going to be a pretty trained, sassy, graceful dancer at this point. It's so. got to be automatic. So I'm going to have us do a quick little exercise to kind of get us a little loose because the biggest thing is people start doing this kind of hopping because you have a flexed foot, it's ingrained in us that we want to flex it so we engage our quad. And once you engage your quad, you kind of take away your jump ability and you're right. here. And this is going to be kind of goofy, but it gets you there. If you just kind of like loosey goosey skip and just like, just skip, yeah. Yeah, and just not worry about what's happening. My kids think I'm really cool on the YouTubes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but as this you won't skip, be gift. it takes away your care about the structure and you just start to shift your weight in a really pedestrian way. And now you have this kind of like bouncing rhythm. Right, yeah. Right, and you don't care so much about like, oh, am I doing the thing she said to do? Right. And so then it brings to your dancing this kind of like, oh, cool, I'm just shifting my feet. Okay. Oh, I feel it. Starting with our left out. Ha, 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 step, and. Ha, 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 step, and. Yep. Yes! I know you're so excited. You just had a huge accomplishment, and I don't want to rain on your parade, but then you do it on the other side. <laughs> Do it on reverse. The other. You do it on the other leg. So then our right leg comes out first. Like that. And up. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. it. So, hop, 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 step. <laughs> that, that's not a jump on there. Literally almost so, fell. There's another way to think about it in terms of counts. The Galliard phrase is six counts, but you do five steps because one of them takes two counts. Yeah. So if you're going, ha, 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 this is a jump. Ha, one, two, ha, three, ha, three, this four, takes five. longer. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. This one, two, three, four. Four, five. Yep, that's okay. our starting point. Where we want to get with this dance is to the point where you were just looping those basics together and okay. you start to do, you start to travel with them as we were. You start to go in circles with them. So you might do something that looks like here. So you just keep doing that forever. Are they then, drinking while this is happening? Of course they are. <laughs> and you're not really dragging. I was exaggeratingly doing that. So it's bit. really small. I'm pushing my leg forward a little bit and there are lots of different interpretations of how big people do their feet. I wanted to keep things basic for you guys today so you could really sure. learn as much as possible and have fun. There are versions where people will interlace their heels and stuff so you can get really flourishy and fancy but it is it's very small you aren't doing really big jumps with this there are some that get out there but those are when you're having your flourish moments so the basic of it is really really like you're only coming off the floor maybe a little bit what are your hands doing uh, are, are, are we near each other and then doing it or? so during this dance there are times when you're holding your partner's hand and there are times when you're apart 
So in the version that I have for you guys, you would start going the same direction and holding hands. Uh -huh. And then we would at some point separate and we're gonna face each other this way. And then it becomes a little bit of a call and response. Like you do a thing and then I do a thing. And then we go back to doing that basic together. Wow. So some of the moves you can do is like a pirouette. So you might step and turn amongst the jumping. You can do that in the air and take it into a jump and you can jump in the air. There is a move called a cabriole where you're taking your feet really flashy little quick slicey jumps. There's one where you can come up and you kind of like, look how virile I am. I can do this big giant jump. And these are all integrated into the little hop. It would be a case of what structure are you choosing to do in the galliard? So you do your basic. I might face my partner during my flourish moment. I'm going to choose to do this jump and then they would have an opportunity. So it's kind of component like I know these things and I can interject them at the appropriate point. What's sort of the upper limit as to how sassy you would be able to get during one of those moments? When you start linking these things together. So instead of like using a basic to go in between everything, if now in phrases of six, you're choosing to do like, I do this and then I do this way and then I do it on the other side and come back. And so now you're starting to link flourishes and then you would go back to that basic. This is the equivalent of like starting back flips and then just keep doing them and yeah. you're waiting for them to take a break and then yeah. they don't. Really, really elegant and graceful and impressive to see like a Lord in his tights, like really kicking his leg out and staying on tempo. Everything we're doing, I assume everybody from your grandmother to your niece knows some version of all of these, but what is, is there a Lombada? Oh, the Renaissance age, the forbidden, the forbidden dance. dance. The forbidden dance. <laughs> I say, old boy, do you have the stamina for this dance? Oh, kickstart my heart. I could go all night. You be careful. This is slippery when wet. Oh, you're so foolish with your investments, your fixation on merkins. Yes, well, you wash your hands. That's silly. There's no need to do that. I wash all of my parts. Well, most of them. Okay, didn't need to. Good God. It's better warm in here. Well, it appears we are evenly matched, my friend. Oh, you know what that means. You don't mean. We must escalate to the ultimate dance. <laughs> okay, so there is a dance called the Volta, which was really, really popular with Elizabeth I, which is why it was acceptable to do, because the queen thought it was good. So everyone was like, well, if it's good enough for the queen, it's good enough for me. But there were a lot of people that thought it was distasteful or lewd because you actually wrap your arm around the lady and you get to place your hand at the front of her corset. A middle-aged merchant, well-to-do person wouldn't have to know this, right? He wouldn't have to, but it depends where you are. So in, in the everyday dancing, people are going to want to do it because, oh, touching, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the higher level, if this is the queen's favorite dance, no matter whether you think it's lewd or not, you're probably going to learn it. Do you maybe lure the queen and get her attention with something like, uh, I don't know, Gangnam style? <laughs> <laughs> Inventing yeah, the robot? <laughs> <laughs> you do your Galliard style, she's impressed, and then you get to touch her and do the Volta. That's how it's done. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. In the words uh, of what? Two Unlimited, are you ready for this? I am ready for this! You don't look like you're ready. I am prepared. Then Quat let's come quat pose. Let's, um, but, but uh, hit them with the... Mm, no, let's You'll hit right. them with a tasty groove. I remember that mm. part distinctly. Someone That's mentioned a, a, a worm. I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me. The, uh, this is a closed rehearsal space. We're settling trade disputes. If you don't mind, we're just Very going important. to... Oh, good God. What are they doing? Oh my! It? It was, it was, uh, we learned this one. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Vela Cruz. The, right. Is, is it uh, the, 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 the Valero? The, the Velasquez? The, the, she, no, she was in Aliens. Aliens was Velasquez. Was the tough one. It was Velasquez. Uh, 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 Vela Cruz. Vela. Ve uh, uh, Velociraptor. They're doing the Velociraptor. The I knew it. My God, I've never seen such footwork. Oh, oh it's like butter poured on sunshine. It's like a thundercloud oh. emanating from a falcon. It's screech. as though George R. R. Martin finished a book. It's making my breeches tight. They're always tight. <laughs> Dude, we have been loving Raycon for a long time now, right? Oh, love at first sight. Love at first listen. So here's beautiful. the thing. We had we had the previous generation, the E50s. Then mm -hmm. we got the new everyday E25s. I don't think I've told you this. I got another set of E25s because I love having them. Ooh. I went an entire week 
not realizing I had two sets in my jean pockets. I'm sure they looked a little bit dad pockets, but that's how small, easy, spelt they are. It's just like uh, whenever I needed them. Music, audiobooks, it was all right there. It's a lot of sound in a tiny little pill. I, I think you can be forgiven for not knowing that you had them for all four of your ears. I don't understand <laughs> why, but okay. They're so comfortable, I even sleep in mine. And the best part is people can support the show. They can get amazing earbuds that aren't going to break the bank, and they can get 15% off by heading on over to buyraycon.com slash rogue. They start off at about half the price of the other brands. They sound great. Yeah. They've got excellent bass added to these new ones and six hours of battery life. I like how discreet they are and comfortable. They just fit right in my ears. Thank you so much, Raycon. You guys are the best. Buyraycon.com slash rogue, but you got to spell it right. R-O-G-U-E. That's not how you spell Raycon. <laughs> Raycon, you'll have to figure yeah. out on your own. Rogue. Ooh. We should, we should, I kind of want to steal the, their little yep. jingle, too. Got to be honest. Pavon, Pavon, got Pavon it. Pavon Gatorade. It's Stick on, with Pavon. Your, yeah. That's how I remember. <laughs> we should totally do this. Get all geared up in our Renaissance garb and go Pavon our asses off down at 6th Street one night at one of the dance clubs. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, huh? yes, Patreon reward. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. All right, Let's so. Pavon.